two minute history of lending in this country. Are you ready? Well, put the, climb, put the timer on. Let's put the stopwatch on. All right, here we go. Brief history. Pretty much before, in the 1980s, before that, no one ever borrowed money. That's not true, but <laughs> um, you used to have to have a 20% deposit. Mm -hmm. And then through the 80s, we started to change that. Lenders mortgage insurance started to be a thing. Um, we introduced products like offset accounts and all that, which is Australian, mate. But in terms of that, back in the 80s, very few borrowers, very few options in terms of lenders to be able to borrow money. Not very few borrowers, but very few lenders. 1990s, right? Brokers mm. get their foot into the market for the very, very first time. We'll save right? you. So, yep, we will save you Aussie John and then Mortgage Choice and also AFG. So it started Wizard, in the West, right? Started in Perth, yeah. started in Perth. Uh, and then they bought it across the east and so, so that do you meant, remember wizard mark bruce yeah yeah, yeah. wizard yeah. wizard home loans all mm -hmm. of those guys got into the act and that meant exactly what you're just talking about bryce distribution for non-bank lenders mm -hmm. right so really the 1990s was the footprint of um, starting to get some choice all right then in the 2000s we started to see more product options okay so we had a uh, authorized deposit institution so all the banks and we also have these non-bank lenders and tier lenders and blah, blah, blah. So that did definitely mean that there were some more aggressive products that came into the market, Bryce, um, and a lot more competition, right? So what were some of those aggressive products that we saw in the early 2000s? Low docs, no docs. Very good, very good. <laughs> no deposit yeah. home loans. So basically you didn't those need it. Those were the days. Those were the days, <laughs> right? And servicing and assessment standards change in certain relaxed. countries and we're relaxed a little bit. Um, ninjas. Yeah, ninjas. Ninja loans, <laughs> yeah. no income, no, no job, no assets. <laughs> That's it. And that pretty much led to a small thing called the GFC, yes. the Global Financial yes. Crisis, because we had, uh, we had uh, you know, Greenspan in the US basically saying low interest rates, which meant that what was happening, right, was they were bringing rates down to virtually zero and then assessment rates were so so low, like 2% assessment rates, 1.5. So people on 30 grand could like borrow $300,000. It was ridiculous, mm -hmm. right? Um, hence we, you know, we had the the property uh, crash in the US and that led to the global Which financial crisis. Which the term jingle mail, Ben. That's right. Because they don't have non-recourse. Correct, non-recourse borrowing is non over there. So, they, so if you can't pay the loan, you put the keys in the mail, send it back to the bank and say, thanks for the opportunity, I'm going this way, you can <laughs> deal with it. Now the fortunately our regulators weren't asleep at the wheel like they were in the States. Yeah, um, and we did have assessment rates at a reasonable level and also we had full course borrowings. Uh, so uh, so in terms of that meant that your obligation was you can pay it and you couldn't just send your, you know, send your keys back in the post through the jingle mail. We come to the 2010s and this has really been enough post GFC, the decade of reform mm -hmm. and the decade of heightened regulation. And we've seen that really come to a fore at the end of, as we're coming to the end of this decade, um, we, are, we are absolutely seeing that post the Hain Royal Commission in terms of what's happening here. In fact, CBA released their, uh, their numbers yesterday. And just to give you an idea, their ongoing costs to comply with new regulations is almost $300 million a year now Oops. in terms of putting that. Now, as a, in terms of rectification of uh, products that, and services which weren't appropriate, over two billion dollars, Bryce. Mm. So that just tells you that we are definitely in this. Uh, as we finish the end of this uh, this decade, um, where also two other big things are happening, right? So we also saw the beginning of low interest rates globally, not just in certain markets, but we're now starting to see that play out here in in Australia, and they will be lower for longer. In fact, Bryce, mm -hmm. the ten year bond rate got below one percent. Mm -hmm. It's the first time in history. So for that the listeners at home, let's explain what that's, why that's well, important. It, it just basically means, like, it, I, I summarise the bond market as this, right? That's where, you, that's where you play safely and you play in the equity markets uh, for greed, right? So safety versus greed. And what the bond market does is that sets the price of money, right? And if there's a flight to safety, normally money goes into the bond market or it goes into the share market if, they, if people think it's, it's really comfortable. So when there is a flight to safety, usually that means the bond yields go down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we've got this 10 year bond yield and 30 year bond yields are under 2%. So that says to us that if you think about long-term mortgages and long-term cost of money, it's gonna be lower for longer. Mm -hmm. right? Now, that obviously that's a live market, that changes every day, but as it currently sits today, 
um, those markets and what happened this week and last week there's been some milestones in there we've seen some corrections on the stock market we won't go there because I'm getting over my two minutes but now yeah, well, Bryce, no, I, I chuckled at the two minutes anyway so <laughs> well that's so low and low inflation and low wage growth and that's going to be a thing of the gig economy right as everything is democratized and efficiencies and productivities improve through the use of machines and computers that will be pressure you call in it the some, gig economy it's the gig economy which the effectively gig, the gigabyte economy well it just effectively means that uh, people um, will will trade their time for for so there'll be a lot more contractors and people doing that type of work as opposed to the more permanent work that we're seeing traditionally um, and that means that people offshore in other countries will do some of the work that you need done here because mm. it may be cost effective for that work to be done as opposed to the cost here. So that's the gig economy story. And so the final thing, Bryce, that we're seeing that's just happened in the last couple of years as we finish off this decade is pricing has changed from, but, uh, for different products. So owner-occupied, principal and interest versus interest only, and then mm. um, investment, interest only versus P&I repayments. They've now got different pricing models. And that's what we're going to be talking about today in regards to that borrowing power. And Bryce, for the 2020s, I'm going to term a new phrase. Are All you right. ready for it? <laughs> Are you ready to hashtag it? Because this one's going to go global. Yep. Right? And it's effectively, what's happening is it's throttling. So we're going to see, and this is the way in which the regulators are going to throttle mortgage lending. Okay, so similar to the way in which you know they throttle data plans. If you use most of your data, the speed in which you get that, that's exactly what they're trying to do in the mortgage market because of the fear of asset appreciation getting beyond um, its fair, fair market value. Mm -hmm. Right. So that we've talked about that plenty of times in other podcasts about winter is coming and, and things move beyond their fair because people act irrationally. So that's what they're doing. So part of me says I don't mind it um, in in the sense of trying to keep. Um, uh, the economy safe and the prudential regulators, as their name suggests, prudential means that they've got to make sure that the banks are healthy and, and are low risk and the economy doesn't implode because of, of our bank's uh, you know, baseline level of assets and, and protection they've got in there. So the 2020s is going to be a period of throttling. And we're seeing the first bit of that throttling happening now at the end. Of, so they throttled, they throttled really hard, they throttled on um, interest rates, they throttled on interest only, um, they basically set the assessment rate ridiculously high and they stopped the property market in its tracks mm. and now they're trying to release the throttling a little bit by doing this, um, these new reviews. So what have they changed? Okay, so for our so for our just, just for yep, clarity, is this, clarity, is this still part of the two minutes or have we full No, stop? we're done. That okay. was the back history, just, right? Because right, we're cool. here now. Good, good. Here right, today, right? Checking. So from July, <laughs> from July 